Hello everyone, this is Cynthia once again on Embracing His Word. So this is my second video and this video is also in reference to ungodly soul ties. So are you in a relationship that is toxic? Well this is the video that you want to watch this video series on ungodly soul ties. So the story that I want to share with you today is in reference to Samson and Delilah. Now Samson he was a man of unmatched physical strength, but when he fell in love with a woman named Delilah, he met his match. Samson abandoned his God-assigned mission to please the woman who had stolen his affections. Now, this indiscretion led not only to uh, physical blindness in the end, but uh, we see that he had uh, spiritual blindness because when you play around with the crocodile, eventually the crocodile will get you. So, Samson played around with Delilah for some time. And so he became spiritually blind. He opened the door to an ungodly soul tie. And this allowed the enemy to uh, wreak havoc in his life. And so uh, this, this indiscretion led to uh, physical blindness, imprisonment, and, par uh, and powerlessness. So even worse, the Holy Spirit departed from Samson. And so if you are a Christian, you are a believer, and you are in a toxic relationship, you definitely need to really humble yourself and submit yourself to God and honor God above any relationship in your life. So it, the, the scriptures lets us know that the Holy Spirit departed from Samson. You know, I never want the Holy Spirit to depart from my life. And so we want to be on guard. The Bible says that we need to guard our heart above all things. So the story of Samson and, Del and Delilah, it parallels the spiritual and political disarray in the nation of Israel at that particular time. So although Samson was physically strong, he was morally weak. You know, the scripture says the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. You know, we need to uh, place boundaries in our lives. We need to make sure we're being proactive, not allowing our weakness to get the best of us. That, and also it says that, but God used Samuel, uh, Samson's uh, failures and mistakes to demonstrate his sovereign power. Even when we do wrong, God can still step in and intervene in our behalf. So uh, the story of Samson and Delilah is found in Judges chapter 16. When you have your own free time, make sure you go and read those uh, particular chapters in Judges chapter 16. Samson is also mentioned in the Heroes of Faith in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 32. So what we know about Samson, a little bio on Samson, is that he was a miracle child. He was born to a woman who had previously been barren. His parents were told by an angel that Samson was to be a Nazarite all his life. So the definition of a Nazarite was that they took a vow of holiness to abstain uh, from wine and grapes and to not cut their hair or their beard and to avoid contact with dead bodies. So as he grew up as a young, a young boy, the Bible says that the Lord blessed Samson and the spirit of the Lord began to stare in him because he actually dedicated himself to the Lord. So the Spirit of God, of God began to really grow in Samson. So however, as he grew into manhood, Samson lusts began to rule and dominate and overpower him. So after a series of foolish mistakes and bad decisions, he fell in love with a woman named Delilah. Now, let me just pause right here because when we are, we have a calling, God has um, placed a specific calling in our lives for us to go forth and to minister in his name or to do whatever he has called us to do. The most important thing that you can do for yourself is to take care of your, your wounds, take care of those re that rejection, any type of wounding that you have in your heart, any area of unforgiveness, you want to take care of that. You want to address that before God. 
you want to ask God to heal those wounds, those disappointments, because that is the very thing that the enemy will target in your life to bring you down, to make sure that you don't accomplish your God ordained and assigned assignment that he has given to you. So Samson, he fell in love with a woman named Delilah. His affair with this woman from the Valley of Sarek marked the beginning of his downfall and eventual demise. So if we're spending time with God, we can get before God and ask the Lord uh, to show you those specific weak areas and how you can set boundaries and how you can guard your heart. That's how we begin to really uh, seek God so that we will uh, be protected by the Lord God Almighty. But if we allow these things, these unhealed hearts and wounds to continue to remain in our hearts and they, they continue to fester as time go on because time does not heal those wounds, but we need to uh, be proactive and seeking God for the healing and for the deliverance. So it didn't take long for the rich and powerful Philistine rulers to learn of the affair and immediately pay a visit to Delilah. So uh, at first when, when Samson uh, was pursuing women, he were looking at these women and, and with, uh, that were Philistines. And so the parents were urging uh, Samson to choose someone within, uh, uh, within Israel or under the covering of God. But this that is not what Samson wants. But instead, Samson wants to go outside of the covenant of God and choose someone that definitely was not under the covering of God. You see, as, as Christians, as believers, we don't go outside and choose a, a, a relationship that's not God ordained. We cannot be unequally yoked with someone believing everything is going to work out, everything is going to turn out beautiful, or you can bring, bring a change about in that person. We are not God. We cannot change a person, and we cannot uh, be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So with an unbeliever, what do you have in common? What do you, what do you have in common with an unbeliever? So we need to ask ourselves those, those questions. What do we have in common with an unbeliever? So, um, at the time Samson was judge over Israel and had been taking out great vengeance on the Philistines. Hoping to capture, capture him, the Philistine leaders uh, each offered Delilah a sum of money to collaborate with them in a scheme to uncover the secret of Samson's great strength. You see, you know, the enemy is always strategizing how he can bring you down. So you're the mighty woman of God or you're the mighty man of God, but yet you have not dealt with unhealed hearts and wounds in your heart. You have not dealt with uh, those needs that you're trying to get fulfilled outside the plan of God. So we must be on top of it and understand we want to beat the devil at his game. So smitten with Delilah, and infatuated with his own extraordinary talents, his gifts. You know, sometimes we get, uh, people get all infatuated with their talents, their gifts, whatever God has given to them. Oh, I sing so wonderful. I can sing better than any person. So don't get so enamored with your gift because God is the one that gave you that gift. But we walk humbly with the Lord. And so when we allow the enemy to bring in pride, we allow the enemy to bring in all kinds of negative things into our lives, we, we need to watch out for the trap of the enemy. So Samson walked right into the destructive plot and the plans of the enemy. Using her powers, this is Delilah, she were using her powers of seduction and deception. So Delilah persistently wore down Samson with her repeated requests until he finally divulged the crucial information. So she was lying on his head, on his lap and saying, oh Samson, why don't you tell me your secret to your strength? And you know, um, Samson been all so gullible after, after she pressed him over and over about his strength. Finally, he gives in and tells her, 
actually the truth about his strength. So as part of that vow, his hair was never to be cut. And, she, and he divulged that information to Delilah. So when Samson told Delilah that his strength would, have, would leave him if a razor were to be used on his head, she cunningly crafted her plan with the Philistine rulers. So that's why I say we can't uh, play around with a crocodile because a crocodile is not our friend. While Samson slept on her lap, Delilah called in a co-conspirator to shave off the seven braids of his hair. Subdued and weak, Samson was captured. Rather than kill Samson, the Philistines pre preferred to humiliate him by gouging out his eyes and subjecting him to hard labor in a Gaza prison. So as he slayed a grinding grain, grinding grain, his hair began to grow back. But the careless Philistines paid no attention. And in spite of his horrible failures and sins of great consequence, Samson's heart now turned to the Lord. He was humbled. Samson began to pray. He began to seek God's face. He, 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 he realized the error of his ways. And so he humbled himself and he began to seek God through prayer. So during a pagan sacrificial ritual, the Philistines had gathered in Gaza to celebrate. And as their custom, they paraded Samson, their prized enemy prisoner, and to the temple to entertain the jeering crowds. So you know what? Samson had a plan for them. So Samson braced himself between the two central support pillars of the temple, and he pushed, he pushed with all his might. Down came those pillars, the temple, killing Samson and everyone else in the temple. So through his death, uh, Samson destroyed more of his enemies in this one sacrificial act than he had previously killed in all the battles of his life. So even though Samson lost his way, uh, his uh, he lost his way and he didn't really um, pursue God in the way that he should have pursued him, he did eventually fulfill the assignment that God gave to him. So some of the major things and life lessons that we need to learn today is that Samson's calling from birth was to begin the deliverance of Israel from Philistine oppression. So when reading the account of Samson's life and then his downfall with Delilah, you might tend to think Samson wasted his life and that he was a failure. In many ways, he did waste his life, but even still, he accomplished his God-assigned mission. So I want to encourage you to remember your God assigned mission. What have God called you to? And how are you planning to establish and protect and guard your heart? And that you are rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. And that you're not playing around with any crocodile relationship, but you're pursuing God. You're putting God first. And so this is what I encourage you to do through prayer, through seeking God, write out your declarations, what God wants you, how God wants you to live. Write out your declarations, read them, meditate on them, and, and proclaim them, and come against the powers of darkness that want to cause you to be in a toxic relationship. And so I want you to subscribe. I want you to share this video. Also, I want you to continue listening listening to this series of videos on ungodly breaking ungodly soul ties my next video will will be on a, a example of godly soul ties so so be sure to listen to the third video that i will, will put out in jesus name be blessed and have a wonderful day